Well, we had the fall's first freeze last night, Halloween night, and I'm afraid it got my little squash in that raised garden space back there. It's still kind of got my fingers pretty frosty. And I don't know if this is the best time to show this kind of video, but uh, it's nice weather, so I'm out here. Uh, I happened to find this bag. Well, I didn't happen to find it. I bought it on eBay, and you can, can't even read it there, but I know because... I do a lot of research that this is Tommy Davis. This is a Tommy Davis bat. It would have been early 60s. Tommy Davis won a batting title in, I think, 1962, competing against guys like Mays and Aaron and Frank Robinson. And unfortunately, he really banged up his leg a little later, or he would have been right there with the others. But this is an unusual bat in that, of course, it's wood, but it's got a very modest taper, as you can see. It's not like the wooden bats today. It's 34 inches, so it's not particularly long by the standards of the 60s, but it just it feels a lot heavier than many wooden bats that I've held. It's a very substantial bat, and I was messing around with this bat, just noticing. And by the way, I've you know I've just released my book called Metal Ropes about using dead ball hitting techniques on uh, for, with today's aluminum alloy bats. You can buy a copy of that and other books on smallballsuccess.com, which will send you to Amazon. But uh, So what am I doing using the wood again? Well, just because that's how we began, and I still love wood, and I still think it's possible that you could find a... You don't want to use a bat like this that's a collector's item because you could break it, and that would be stupid. But uh, I just noticed in using this with our dead ball load, how a bat that is this heavy, heavy can really sort of do the work of lifting for your hands. It's not as much that you have to do as you would with a metal bat. So you're standing here, and again, I've got my front foot sort of angled out, and I'm going to I'm going to lift it up as I lift the bat, but I especially want you to see my hands here. So I'm, I'm doing this number, the Thai Cobb thing, and when I'm ready to swing, or when the pitcher's rearing back and about to throw the ball and I'm, I'm loading up is what I'm doing, I'll dip a little deeper and I'll let the top hand really take control of the handle. My bottom hand's almost, you know, hardly holding on. So I'll go way down, and I do that so that I can come back up. The farther I go down, the easier it's going to be for the weight of the bat to lift it right back up. And again, my bottom hand is just along for the ride. There's not much holding on here except these two bottom fingers. Very light. So I'm loaded waiting for the pitch. I've got my front foot lifted up and maybe coiled a bit. And when I go into the swing, that's when the bottom hand squeezes hard. Now, I still don't want the thumb to lock on that bottom hand. I don't ever want that to happen. I'm just tightening up these fingers. And when I pull it in, I'm almost, you know, it feels like, although I see it's not on the screen there, but it feels like I'm coming completely laterally into the pitch as the bottom hand takes the lead. Coach Joe Brokoff has called this uh, shining the flashlight on the ball. I'm almost lining up the knob as if it were a flashlight onto the pitch. So down and then bottom hand, take control, get that handle up into the pitch, and this way I can do that dead ball, in that incredible technique of actually stepping and swinging down at the same time. And, and then as I come through, the top hand gets strong again, and it, it drives the bat through into the pitch, and I'm going to finish with that classic Oh gosh, you can see that. Just go on uh, Google Images or someplace. You can see so many hitters, even up until World War II, 
and a little bit after who finished just like this. That's how they got there. Their whole front side, leg and hands coming down pretty much at the same time into the pitch. Why do you want to do that? Well, if the pitch is a little lower or coming a little slower than you thought, and you get a little ahead of it, or you have to go down to get it, well, you're already going down anyway. You're following this slightly descending straight line into the pitch. You know, pitches don't actually come up from where you see them. They only go down, or sometimes they'll slow down a little bit. So it's very easy to reach out and get a change up or to, to come down and get a breaking ball when your barrel is headed that way anyway. And we talked about this even in the metal bat book, in metal ropes, how so many swings today have you, and not just today, but this goes back to, you know, this was the period right after World War II when they started doing this a lot, but they would load up a lot farther back, and the coaches were all telling the players, stay back, stay back, and they wanted them to rot back. Well, what that does is put a dip in your swing. So... If you are a little bit ahead or if the pitch drops effectively, you're going to swing and miss it entirely or you're going to roll over on it. Neither one of those outcomes is very promising. So that's why this is such a high contact line drive sort of a swing. And again, the reason I wanted, one of the reasons I wanted to make this quick video was just to emphasize if you have an old wooden bat like this that is really hefty, you know, you're not swinging it from up here and having to find some way to drag all that weight through the zone in time to get the pitch. It's right there, almost over your belly button. And you're just levering down with the top hand and driving through with the bottom hand as you step into the pitch. So there's so much, you really have to try this yourself to feel the truth of it, but there's so much of the weight in this bat that is driving that stroke. And I can be real quick with that and because it's a heavy bat and because the weight is evenly distributed, narrow, uh, a, a gradual taper, I can get that to zip down on the ball real fast. Um, again, I don't know exactly what I'm telling you to do here because you first have to be able to find a wooden bat but hey maybe you have an uncle or somebody who's good with woodworking and can make you one of these uh, I think this I think this could really see a comeback 